Next to me is the new Nissan Z Nismo. Learning from the GT500Z race car, Nismo has created a redesigned, more powerful, higher downforce Z. So what's it like to drive and is it worth its $65,000 base price? Today we're going to find out exactly that. Under the hood of the new Nissan Z Nismo is a 3 liter twin turbocharged V6 making 420 horsepower and 384 pound feet of torque. That's 20 horsepower more and 34 pound feet above the regular Z. That's thanks to extra cooling, electronic wastegate control, and the ignition timing control unit from the Nissan GTR. The Nismo variant is only offered with a 9-speed automatic transmission. That being said, the Nismo-specific Sport Plus mode results in shifts that happen 50% quicker than the standard Z. The result, 0-60 to 60 in 4 seconds, 12 seconds flat in the quarter mile, although I do wish there was a 3-pedal layout, a manual would be so perfect. For this car. At the front, we've got canard wing vortex generators to create more downforce. We've also got an enlarged opening in the front for more cooling, but honestly, the design language of the larger front grille looks so much better than the standard Z. I kind of wish the normal Z looked like this, but it does differentiate it from the lower priced model. I also love this aggressive red line that goes throughout the entirety of the car. Coming around the side, we've got 19 inch raised wheels that look phenomenal. Truth be told, if you were going to go aftermarket on a Nissan Z, you'd probably be looking at raised wheels anyway, so it's awesome they come standard on the car. They're also wrapped in Dunlop special tires that were based on the learnings of the Nissan GTR. As you can see, the red line continues down the side skirt and around the back of the vehicle. We've also got a nice accent on the mirror itself. The roofs are black on the Nismo edition as well. We also have larger diameter springs with a higher spring rate as well as stiffer sway bars so that this car handles better on the track and in the canyons. And having driven this for a week, it handles so much better than the normal Z. We also have 15 inch front brakes from Akibono for better stopping power. And the brake pads are made of a special material to help with brake fade. Honestly, this might be my favorite angle on the entire car. And we even have a bigger spoiler to increase downforce yet reduce drag at the same time, as well as a more aggressive and cool upgraded rear diffuser. And being a Nissan Z, it's also practical. We've got a button right here under the Nissan logo to pop this rear hatch and you've got tons of storage space. So it's a fun sports car, and you can actually put some serious stuff in the back. The interior of the new Z is covered in Alcantara, from the steering wheel to these awesome Recaro bucket seats. Not to say the standard Z seats are bad by any means. They're actually pretty good, but these look so much cooler and are way more supportive. Now, we've got this kind of futuristic drive control unit for the 9-speed automatic transmission. You pull it backwards to put it into drive, as well as switch it into manual mode. The paddles on the steering wheel are some of the best in the business. They feel absolutely fantastic, and they look really cool as well. Now, to the right of the control unit is something labeled D mode, which is questionable, but it means drive mode, and you can switch between normal mode, sport, and sport plus. Sport plus you only get in the Nismo. Now, coming back over to the steering wheel, it fits great in your hands. We've got a digital instrument cluster right here in front of me, which looks great, it says Nismo on the display. You can also customize the instrument cluster as well. So if we go to this button here on the left side of the steering wheel, click that, go to change meter view, we can change between sport, my favorite mode, we can go to normal, which looks reasonably cool, kind of a standard instrument cluster with a tack and a speedo. And then once again, we can go to enhanced, which is, I don't know, it's not my favorite, but it is different. So you can get more information in the center of the vehicle and still see key information like speed and RPM. So what does the Nismo Z actually like to drive? Let's take it out on the road and find out. <laughs> Man, I gotta say, I love the way the new Nismo Z drives. As somebody who owned a Toyota Supra back when they came out in 2020, I was super curious to see how the new Z would perform in comparison. I went out to Las Vegas on the press launch, drove it there, and also had a great opportunity to drive the Nissan Z on my local roads back at home for about a week. And I have to say, even the standard Z performs better dynamically than the Supra. Now the Nismo Z takes things to an entirely new level. The responsiveness of the steering, and honestly, the steering feel in general, is unbelievably impressive. I mean, you've got more steering feel 
and just how it communicates with you around corners than a lot of $100,000 plus cars. Yes, I know this thing is expensive, starting at $65,000, but it's around the same price as a BMW M2 or a Mustang Dark Horse. And honestly, I think this has more driver involvement than either of those two cars. The suspension is fantastic. We've got faster spring rates, larger diameter springs. They tested this for thousands of hours on the racetrack to perfect the handling, and it comes together so well. Those Dunlop tires also get a phenomenal amount of grip. I will say, in the wet, they're a little bit squirrely, but that's usually true of most, most performance tires. Now, yes, I do wish that it had a manual transmission. I feel like this level of power, this weight, this size of vehicle just begs for a three-pedal layout. But I imagine Nissan knows that they just wouldn't sell as many of them as it would make sense to offer a manual with. I mean, otherwise I'm not quite sure what the reasoning is. They say that there's no mechanical limitations in terms of torque or horsepower or anything like that. So I hope that enough people demand it and maybe they're just waiting a year or two to drop a Nismo with a manual transmission. That being said, for a torque converter automatic, this is one of the best ever. Seriously, the downshifts are very fast. The upshifts are nice and crisp. That on the second to third shift, it kind of punches you in the back, which is something you're used to in a dual clutch transmission, but not in an automatic. I mean, the tuning of this is phenomenal. It sounds cool. Oof, that induction noise is brutal. And you really can push the absolute crap out of this thing. Zero to 60 in four seconds, quarter mile in 12. But it absolutely flies in the canyons. This isn't a straight line car, it just happens to be pretty damn quick in a straight line. We're in Sport Plus mode now, and man, I love this thing. I love the shift indicator light on the tachometer to let you know when to shift. <laughs> Sport Plus mode is awesome, but let's take it out of Sport Plus mode to see what it's like um, in a more civilized driving scenario. I probably would always drive this thing in Sport Plus. The suspension is firm, the steering's responsive, the exhaust is loud, but that's how I would like driving a vehicle like this. But in standard mode, it's reasonably soft. You could absolutely drive this thing every single day. Let's put it back into automatic mode. I haven't really driven this car much in automatic, automatic mode. I haven't really driven this car much in automatic mode whatsoever, but it's super smooth, easy to drive. The visibility is fantastic for a two-door sports car. Honestly, over the shoulder visibility is good no matter which way you look. The steering is nice and easy. It's a very easy car to drive slow, and honestly, it's a relatively easy car to drive fast. It just kind of begs you to push it harder and harder. And because it doesn't have 500, 600, 700 horsepower, you can genuinely push the crap out of this vehicle uh, and not end up off a cliff. Now, there are some shortcomings with the interior. I don't love the door handle, some of the controls for the window switches, as well as the mirrors are a little bit plasticky and cheap for a car that'll be $70,000 plus. Hopefully the dealer markups aren't crazy, but I wouldn't be shocked if dealer markup is pretty intense on this car. The climate controls are all right, but other than that, I think it's a really well done car. I love the seats, the steering wheel feels fantastic. And just the overall driving experience is really impressive. So is it worth $65,000? In my opinion, yes. I think it communicates with you better than a lot of cars that are significantly more expensive. And look, if you're a Nissan purebred, then obviously this is gonna be right up your alley. If you're somebody who's likely to buy a BMW M2 anyways, it might be a tougher sell, but what I'd ask you to do is try to go drive one of these and see for yourself. I bet it would surprise you how fun this thing truly is to drive. A lot more than the numbers suggest, and even the numbers suggest that it would be very fun to drive. All right, back in Sport Plus mode, where the Nismo belongs. This thing is addicting to drive. <laughs> it's got an impressive amount of mechanical grip. 
Honestly, I'm so impressed with this transmission. It's kind of ridiculous for an automatic. So obviously, do not write off this car just because it's not available with a manual. The automatic is pretty damn spectacular. And the brakes are really impressive as well. Akibono knows what they're doing and knows how to slow this thing down. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. I'll leave you with one last full throttle acceleration pull in the Nismo.